To play Dungeons & Dragons, you need a character on one of these character sheets. Today, we're going over the best way to generate their ability scores. Yes, there's more than one way to come up with these scores, so let's dive in. Adventurers, welcome! If we're just meeting, I'm Kristen, and I'm looking to teach as many people as possible how to play Dungeons & Dragons. The game, in my opinion, is the best role-playing game out there. Now, how good or how bad your character is, is determined by six ability scores listed right down the side of your character sheet. These scores are Strength, Dexterity, Constitution, Intelligence, Wisdom, and Charisma. But where do these scores come from? How do you get the numbers that go in these boxes? Let's go over the three different ways that you can come up with these scores and make sure you stick around to the end of the video to find out which method is actually best. Now the first way to get these scores in typical D&D fashion is by rolling dice. You're gonna get yourself four six-sided dice, give them a roll, remove the lowest die, take the three that are left, and add them together. Now write that number down on a piece of scrap paper or maybe even in the margin of your character sheet, but somewhere where you can keep track of these numbers you're gonna generate. Now you're going to do this five more times and you will have the six ability score numbers that you need that you can plug into these different abilities anywhere you'd like. When I Dungeon Master, I have a house rule that if we're going to roll for our ability scores, that you're also allowed to re-roll any ones that come up. Now this will generate a slightly higher set of ability scores, but we are supposed to be heroic adventurers, right? If we were just your ordinary everyday people, we'd likely stay home. Adventurers have that something special about them that they wanna head out and be heroic, so why not start with slightly better scores. Now the second way that you can get these scores is to simply use what's called the standard array. Now these are a predetermined set of ability scores that you can just use because you one, either want to save time and don't want to do all that rolling, or because you just don't like your scores being so randomized. I mean, you could roll pretty low on some of these, so if you'd like to use the standard array, you're just going to take a 15, 14, 13, 12, 10, and eight, and distribute them any way you see fit on your character sheet in your ability scores. Adventurers, if you're enjoying this video so far, please go ahead and hit that like button, give us a thumbs up, it really helps support the channel. Now the third and final way you can generate these ability scores is to use a variant method found in the player's handbook called the point by system. Now this point by system, I was told is actually brand new to fifth edition Dungeons and Dragons. I've never played any of the previous editions, but apparently this is something new that they decided to add in this edition. And I just used it for the first time to make a character and I really liked it. Point by system gives you a pool of 27 points to spend on different ability scores. Now all the scores range between eight and 15, and eight costs zero. If you want a nine, that costs one point, a 10 costs two points, and 11 costs three points. Four points will get you a 12, spending five points will get you a 13, if you want a 14, that'll cost you seven points, and a 15 will cost you nine points. I found this method of getting points for your ability scores really interesting. It actually allows for some really high and really low scores together. If you want, you can buy a 15, 15, 15 with all your points, and then just have an eight, an eight, and an eight left over because they don't cost anything or you can have a nearly equal set of numbers like 13, 13, 13, 12, 12, 12. This method gives you a lot of control over what points you would like to have available to put in your ability scores. Now, if you're just starting out with Dungeons and Dragons, perhaps you're playing with the starter kit or with the essentials kit. 
Now the starter kit already has pre-generated characters in it. And if you're going to use those, you don't have to do any of these methods to get your ability scores. They're already on the sheets. If you look through these characters, you may notice that these scores go anywhere from eight all the way up to 16, but that's because they already have bonuses added in for what race was chosen. Now, if you're going to create your own characters and you have the essentials kit, there's instructions in the book for using the rolling method and the standard array. This point by system isn't mentioned in the essentials kit at all, but it doesn't mean you can't use it. It's just a dungeon master variant that's included in the player's handbook. Now, if you love all sorts of Dungeons and Dragons content, including tips, tricks, unboxings, and reviews, make sure you go ahead and hit the subscribe button to subscribe to our channel and the notification bell so you don't miss any epic upcoming videos. Epic question of the day, which method do you prefer for making your characters? Or if you're brand new and you're going to make your very first one, which one do you think you'd like to try? Answer in the comments down below. Now, which one of these three methods is actually the best way to create a character? I'm going to tell you, in my opinion, it's whichever way you enjoy the most. Whichever way is going to give you the character that you're looking to play, that you're going to have the most fun in your game. Dungeons & Dragons is all about having fun and telling a story together. And just because a character may have some low scores in certain areas, or you've gone with another method that gives you a lot of heroic high scores, doesn't mean either way is wrong or either way is going to be any less enjoyable in your game. I encourage you to actually try all three methods in various games and see which way you actually like the best. I couldn't even pick a favorite. I actually enjoy all three. Now, before you run off and make your character, make sure you check with your dungeon master which method they prefer to use because sometimes they want everybody in the party to all use the same method to keep the game pretty balanced. Now, if you're looking for more character options than what's provided in the player's handbook, you're going to want to check out my review of Xanathar's Guide to Everything. That's coming up right here on the next screen. Just make sure you go ahead and click on that and I will see you in that video. Now go have an epic adventure.